Got it. Welcome back. As you can see, we progressed a little bit farther on our uh, build since last time. We've taken the uh, clutch cover off and taken the engine, uh, disassembled it a little bit to check for any uh, major problems, rust, or damage. And um, from it being sitting, it, it would not be uncommon to maybe find some water in here and some a lot of rust, and we don't. The engine looks really good. So now we're ready to start putting our stuff back together and we got to start with well, putting the top end on but before we can do any type of assembly we have to set our ring gap an often overlooked step is setting the ring gap making sure we have the correct gap when the rings are installed into the cylinder to do this you'll need to get out your trusty uh, feeler gauge here and of course you'll have to have your new piston rings and something kind of unique about this this uh, engine, we'll stop here a little bit, is this has uh, three different piston rings. This is very unusual for a two-stroke. It's common on a four-stroke, but very unusual for a two-stroke. Um, the manual states the reason why the F5 uh, 350 Bighorn has three rings is the third ring is to aid in cooling the cylinder and piston. Now honestly, I <laughs> don't know what that means. Um, it, it just seems like it'd be extra friction because, and Kawasaki must have known that because in the optional power up kit that was offered during that year was a optional lighter two ring piston that helped this engine achieve the claimed 45 horsepower that uh, everybody wanted out of this engine. Anyway, we need to take our rings and we're going to measure them one by one. Following our service manual, you install it into the system, into the cylinder, approximately five millimeter down. We use the, uh, use the piston to just make sure it's squared up there. And I have, I have my feeler gauges set out, <clears throat> my minimum gap, and that, that's real important. We don't want the gap to be too tight or the rings won't seat properly. And that fits in there pretty good. I don't feel any uh, any resistance. So let's go to the next size. I feel just a teeny bit, but not still slides in and out of there pretty easy. So let's uh, get to our next size larger here. And we'll see how good we <coughs> are. And you know, I can just barely feel some uh, some drag on that gap there so that and that particular measurement is right in between the minimum and maximum amount of ring gap that is allowed before we have to replace the rings in this case it should be right in there because if you remember in the last episode we measured our cylinder and we determine that it was in spec, so the new rings should be in spec. However, should the ring gap be too tight, you need to take a file, and you're not going to be taking too much material, but file in between. You'll hold them together and file in between to get the correct gap. And, and this will happen sometimes, especially on brand new cylinders. Uh, the gap can be actually a little on the tight side. But the big thing is, is you don't want your rings to have too loose of a gap or then you'll lose compression on a on your freshly built motor so next next ring up and we finish and we'll be finished with this job well now that we have our ring gaps checked and set for this cylinder we can go ahead and now start assembling our piston okay we're ready to start assembling our piston now Different engines uh, come with different types of rings. Uh, these are uh, regular old iron rings uh, that are plated on the ends. That's why they're kind of shiny. It's, it's hard to see in the camera here. 
One other thing that sometimes comes with with um, your piston kit is uh, these little funny looking. Uh, they're almost wiry and they're kind of octagonal or you know they, they're kind of wavy. I guess is the best way to describe these. And a lot of people don't don't know what these are, and a lot of people just trash them. And in some situations, that's the correct thing to do. Uh, some engines actually don't need them or run better without them. Uh, your service manual will tell you. What these are called are expander rings. And obviously in a two ring piston you're only going to have one of these and they're always installed on the lowermost ring. In this case since we have three piston rings these two go on the lowermost. What they do is basically they act as an extra spring to put more tension on the rings as they're in the cylinder to help ring seal. And with this high open compression of engine, uh, this is pretty high for um, especially in 1970, um, they used two of these to help ac achieve the correct uh, ring sealing. So they go on pretty simply. They just slide on and you put them into the um, into the uh, groove that they, they go in and you want to make sure the gap is then located. Uh, if you look closely at your pin, uh, piston, uh, there will be little pins that are uh, where the um, where the piston gap should go. And also you want to note where their position in the piston, whether they're centered or whether they're on the upper or the lower portion, uh, because that will make a difference on how you install the rings. All right, with our expander rings installed, it's time to start installing the piston rings. Now, like I said, you want to note the orientation of the little piston pins that uh, keep the rings from spinning, and look at your rings real closely, and you should notice how the gap uh, is. If it uh, if the pins are centered, it will be two little half moons. In this case, the pins are on the upper port portion of the ring groove, so there's chamfers that correspond to that. And a lot of times the rings will be labeled, will have a punch mark. In this case, they have a T for top, which corresponds to this side goes up, and then that way the rings will be installed correctly. Another handy tool, which is not required, but makes installing piston rings a lot easier, is a ring expander. Uh, you stick both the ends of the rings in here and you can open them up and put them over the ring or the piston rather and it, you can do it with your thumbs and and a lot of people do it this way but it, it can they can really poke and dig into your thumb especially really uh, thick rings like these are uh, that, that's why this tool really really makes it, it a lot easier and it's less less chance of actually breaking the ring in the process. Piston rings are made of real ductile iron, which means that they're, they're very brittle when when certain strains, especially if you try to twist them, they could snap really easy. And we'll install our second ring. And when you're doing this, you only want to expand them as much as needed to get them around the piston. And then just make sure they get seated, make sure that they're aligned with the pins and you'll notice the bottom one pin is over here the middle ones over here and then the top ones back over here they're staggered so there's less chance of compression loss and there we have it a fully loaded piston now another good thing to do is to get your feeler gauge out and check for uh, the gap 
in the ring lands and there's a certain spec to do that. You just stick your feeler gauge in there and measure the gap. Well, before I'm going to put the top end on, I need to put this side cover back on. Um, that's why, along with some of the parts I got, I got a brand new gasket kit. What I'm doing here is just adding just a teeny bit of uh, uh, gasket adhesive. This will help, help position the gasket and keep it uh, lined up with all the bolt holes. There is one locating dowel pin, but the rest of these, there's no way to keep the gasket from slipping around. So just a touch, not too much, just a touch of gasket adhesive so we can stick this on, let it set for a little bit, and then we can slide our clutch cover on. Well, we're ready to install our piston onto our rod. I've already pre-lubed everything. I have the needle bearing in the uh, little end of the rod. And I also had the uh, piston pin in the, uh, in the freezer uh, to, make, to aid in installing it. And it should just slide right in. All right, I got the pin through here, and I'm just using my installer tool to just pull the pin through a little bit to get it just past the uh, grooves where, uh, where the little circlips will go, and that's what I can install next. Well, now that we got our piston installed, we're ready to put the cylinder on. First, I got, I got a little cup full of my two-stroke oil. I'm going to wipe that all over the cylinder, all over the piston and rings to keep them from galling. I have my cylinder base gasket set down on there, and I installed, and I made sure I installed my piston with the arrow pointing the exhaust port uh, per the instructions, and we're ready to put this on. A little tip when you're installing the cylinder. Uh, there, is, there is a specialized tool, a ring compressor, that you can put on that, that compresses the rings, but most people will compress the rings and slide the, the cylinder over just by using their hands. And usually because the cylinder's kind of got a taper to it, usually you can do it this way. But if you can't get it and your rings are catching, then you're going to have to buy the tool. The other thing is, is make sure your ring gaps are lined up with the little pins on the piston. You don't want them in any other position. Otherwise, obviously, the rings are just going to tear out the first time you kick it over. Well, we're ready to put our head on. I got my head gaskets on here, and actually the kit came with 
one head gasket and I'm gonna reuse two of them that came with it because it actually had three and mostly because these engines are notorious for detonation uh, because the head does not have a proper squish band. So this is probably something I'm gonna have to adjust. I may send the head off to have it machined, but for now I'm gonna install on the three head gaskets just to lower the compression a little bit for easier of starting and easier of uh, break in until I get around to tuning uh, this engine and then I can uh, figure out which uh, head gaskets sets uh, work the best. So I have them set on here, set my head on, and I have a, I've installed a bit of uh, thread lubricant on my head bolts so I can get an accurate torque. Well, the last thing we gotta do is torque all our head bolts. I have my torque wrench set to the proper spec and we'll go in a crisscross manner. So until next time, I'm the Junk Man. Like me on Facebook, check out the website, and thanks for watching. Well, now that we got the head on, all we got to do now is tighten up. <laughs> now we all, all we got to do is tighten our head bolts. size socket.